Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Friday video and sometimes we do have a bonus video on Tuesday but today we're checking out AMD's fastest FM1 APU. It is the A83870K. Now we had a look at the FM1 platform in a previous video where we tested the fastest CPU. It was the Athlon 2X4651K. To avoid confusion, the difference between CPU and APU is that the APUs include integrated Radeon graphics. The A83870K has four cores running at 3 GHz. It launched at the end of 2011 for Socket FM1 and it comes with the best graphics configuration. We have 400 shaders clocked at 600 megahertz. This APU has a TDP of 100 watts and I bought mine for $28 from AliExpress. This is the motherboard I purchased from AliExpress. At least it was cheap, it cost only $30. The HDMI port was a little bit flaky, but in the end I got it going to do the video. Also, most of the USB 2 ports at the back do not work. So I simply used one of these brackets and I'm using the headers on the motherboard. Now with APUs, the RAM is shared with the video card and the BIOS has an option for that. So I configured it with the largest amount, which is one gigabyte. We're using a 16 gigabyte DDR3 1600 RAM kit. This is one of those AMD only type memory that you can get for a slightly lower price. I tweaked the timings a little bit. Instead of 11, 11, 11, 28, we are running them at 1600 megahertz with 999, 24 timings. Today we're testing this machine with two operating systems. We're gonna use Windows 10 to see how it handles newer games and then Windows XP because this machine could work really well for a retro gaming PC. We do not need a dedicated video card today, so the setup is pretty bare bones, but I've got some storage devices here for Windows XP. I'm using a 120 gig SSD, and I got this one for Cyber Monday, crucial 500 gig SSD. It was a new egg special, only $44 or something like that, including free postage, so I couldn't uh, resist and also a 240 gigabyte SSD from Western Digital and I'm using this little gadget here. This is a docking station from IC Dock and that lets me basically um, insert both of these SSDs into this little enclosure and then at the back I've got my two SATA ports, SATA power. It just makes everything a little bit neater uh, with the SSDs not tangling around. I had a look on the AMD driver page and there are no Windows 10 drivers for downloading. Instead, you have to go through Windows Update, which will install the latest drivers and also the classic Radeon control panel. So let's have a look at some benchmarks. First up, we've got Cinebench R15 and we're getting 300 points. So that fits in nicely between these two core to quad processors between the Q9400 and the Q9650. Moving on to 3D Mark, unfortunately, here things don't look that great. So the blue bar is our APU and the orange bar is uh, the top CPU for FM1 with Radeon RX 570. Under CloudGate, the performance is still, I wouldn't say respectable, but it's not terrible, but then it gets worse and worse. Skydiver is only a fraction of what an RX 570 can do and Firestrike. We can clearly see that the performance uh, of the integrated Radeon of our APU is quite limited. When we look at power draw, however, there's a bit of a highlight. Look at that under idle, only 30 watts of power consumption. So that is terrific. And even under load, only 105 watts. So that's significantly less compared to the machines that use the dedicated Radeon. And now let's have a look at some games. First up, we're starting with The Witcher 3 from 2015. I use my usual settings, which is 1080p with medium details. And yes, the performance is terrible. Um, yeah, so we can straight away see that this APU is probably not going to cut it with modern games. So let's try something a little bit older. This is Race Driver Grid from uh, 28 also 1080p, uh, details are set to maximum, and yeah, this runs a lot better. It could be a lot smoother, uh, you can just sit down and tweak with the details or the resolution a little bit, but we can see that older games uh, 
run better on this APU compared to the latest and greatest stuff. Let's try something even older. We have Half-Life 2 from 2004. This runs at 1080p. All the details are maxed out and yeah, this runs a lot better. So this seems to be the sort of game that runs really well on this APU. And we have another game, uh, Call of Duty. That's an uh, older classic. This one uses the OpenGL API and also runs well on this machine. Now we're gonna install Windows XP soon, but I thought why not take a franchise that's been releasing games on a regular basis and see how the machine handles it and how the performance increases as we go backwards in time and check out all the titles. So we're starting off with Shadows of the Tomb Raider from 2018. The game wouldn't run it at all, even at 720p with the lowest details. All we can hear is the game audio, but no graphics. And I let it run for five minutes. It just didn't happen. Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider from 2015. 720p, lowest details. At least the game runs, but in my opinion, it's not playable. Around 10, 12, 15 FPS is all we're getting. So let's go back a little bit further. Tomb Raider from 2013, 720p with the lowest settings. And yes, this game is playable, just under 60 FPS, but it really doesn't look nice. So here you might want to go into the options, uh, raise some of the details and aim for a 30 FPS or something like that. Going back a little bit further, Tomb Raider Underworld from 2008. Um, we're running at 1080p maximum details. The game runs great, but this sequence is indoors, so later in the game it won't be nearly as smooth. You might also have to tweak some of the settings. The next game is Tomb Raider Legend from uh, 2006, 1080p, max details, also very playable. So it seems um, you have to go back in time quite a bit for games to be really playable on the integrated Radeon. And now let's have a look at Windows XP Retro Gaming. Installation was pretty straightforward. You need one of those SATA driver packs to get the SSD going with uh, AHCI. Now the AMD website has official Windows XP drivers, but, and I've seen this many, many times, I don't know what the issue is with AMD and the drivers, but it just will not install. So my pro tip in this situation is to just run a Google search. For example, Asus FM1 motherboard or ASRock FM1 motherboard and just get the drivers from there. And that's what it did. Those drivers installed just fine. And we also get the control panel. And here we have some benchmarks for Windows XP. We got 3D Mark in 2001 SE, just over 30,000. In 2003, over 20,000. And in 2005, we get around 12,000 points. I also got a few games. Let's have a look. Doom 3, the resolutions are on the left side. Doom 3 is with ultra details, 110 FPS. Far Cry, ultra details, 82 FPS. Fear, all details maxed out, but no anti-aliasing and no soft shadows. We're getting 49 FPS. This is the most demanding XP game we're trying today. And X2 the threat, we're getting 73 FPS with all details turned on. So guys, the A83870K, AMD's flagship APU for socket FM1. I found this project really interesting. It clearly shows how processors have made little progress compared to uh, graphics cards. So this is a three gigahertz four core CPU. And when paired with a modern video card, you can still run most games just fine. But the integrated graphics really struggled as, as soon as we tried something more modern. So. This platform has retro gaming written all over it. It's fully supported with Windows XP and the performance is perfect for older games like Half-Life 2, Far Cry or Doom 3. I was also impressed with the power consumption. 30 watts for the entire system when idle is pretty nice and much lower compared to the other systems that have the Radeon RX 570. So having worked with the FM1 platform on two separate videos, I do find it's interesting seeing how AMD's APUs started back in 2011 and how far things have come when we look at the Athlon 200GE series, for example. I'm looking forward to checking out the FM2 platform. Hopefully the APUs are stronger in the graphics department. But what do you think of these APUs and the FM platform in general? 
I do like that there are not too many CPUs and APUs available, so it's a nice and overseeable collection. But it also seems that AMD quickly moved on, so these days you hear very little about FM1. And seeing how their flagship APU struggled, it's only to get worse if you pick one of the lesser models, so do keep that in mind. I will see you next week with our weekly Friday video, but keep an eye out for Tuesdays. Sometimes there will be a bonus video. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give it a like and click on that notification bell. And I shall see you soon with another one.